Sri Chaitanya Charita The Pastimes of Lord Chaitanya by Kavi Karnapura Chapter 1 1. Glory to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who has come to the town of Navadweep His form is eternal and full of knowledge and bliss. He is Dark Krishna, who danced with the fair gopis in Vrindavan forest. How have his limbs now become fair by tightly embracing them? 2. I offer my respectful obeisances to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who, with showers of sweet nectar, golden splendor of his limbs, showers that stop all sufferings, and with streams of honey from his lotus feet, again and again, washes this world. 3. We worship Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, whose long arms reach his knees, whose limbs are decorated by a great circle of light, whose playful glance almost touches his ears, whose cheeks are splendid, and who plays like a hundred lions. 4. Everyone should worship Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who, with the glorious nectar, splendor of his jewel toenails, washes away the sleepy ignorance of the three worlds, and with the flooding waves of his love, cools the three worlds. 5. With the splendid nectar of his dancing feet, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu fills the three worlds. I think that nectar is his eternally new mercy. Everyone should worship that mercy again and again. 6. His splendor is supremely glorious and sweet. His great mercy is supremely perfect. His intelligence is glorious and perfect. Please bow down before Lord Garanga's feet. 7. What wise philosopher is able to describe even a tiny fragment of the wonder that is the ocean of Lord Garanga's transcendental qualities? The splendor of his handsomeness and his intelligence and other virtues doubling his own powers again and again, even Lord Gorachandra himself cannot describe these things. 8. Only a person whose heart trembles with love and who has heard them from the mouths of they who are like bumblebees at the Lord's lotus feet can describe the pastimes of Lord Krishna, who is the life's lord of Raja's beautiful girls pastimes that are sweet with youthfulness and rich with handsomeness and charming playfulness. 9. Who is Lord Chaitanya? He is the supreme person whose feet are worshipped by the jewels on the crowns of Brahma and other great demigods, who are themselves the crest jewels of the heavenly cities. Who am I? I am a restless fool. They who are pious and wise never turn from the great mercy Lord Chaitanya offers. 10. Although I am bewildered at heart, I have somehow seen or heard of many of Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. How can an insignificant person like myself hope to describe them? I can describe them only if I am filled with Lord Chaitanya's mercy. 11. What does it matter that I cannot glorify all the Lord's pastimes? By glorifying the Lord's pastimes as far as one is able, a person becomes very fortunate. A person who glorifies the Lord's pastimes as far as he is able is never to be mocked or derided. No one has the power to describe all the pastimes of the Supreme Lord. 12. Even if my book is full of faults, 
the wise, who become intoxicated by hearing songs about the Lord's lotus feet, will still accept it. I have not a moment's worry that they will not like it. 13. The master of the lives of the beautiful women in beautiful Vrindavan flooded the world with the nectar waves of his pastimes. Again and again, he tasted the nectar of his pastimes. Unwilling to stay away from these pastimes, he has again come to this world. 14. Thus, on the pretext of mercifully teaching the world, Again and again, the Lord tasted the nectar of these pastimes. When the Lord finally left this world, the devotees, now the most unhappy of persons, fell to the ground. 15. Again and again, they pitifully cried, O Goranga, O beloved, O Lord, O friend of the fallen, O life of the devotees, O treasure of the devotees. Hearing their words breaks one's heart into a hundred pieces. 16. The devotees were tormented by the fires of the Lord's absence. They saw the entire universe empty, as if it had been completely destroyed. Tears tore their hearts with a hundred wounds. Again and again they screamed, Alas, alas! 17. O Lord, more dear than life, the touch of your feet made the earth most happy and fortunate. Now that you are gone, the earth is drowning in flames of sufferings. 18. Ah, what long austerities did the earth perform! So the nectar of your feet filled her with nectar. Alas, alas! Now that you have gone, the earth explains the meaning of her name. She bears all burdens. 19. O Lord, O beloved, O Lord of the heart, O ocean of mercy, O limitless one, O forgiver of sins, O dear one, O dear one, alas, alas, now we are all dead. In the absence of your feet, everyone has become poor and wretched. Everyone sighs pitifully like a host of tortured sinners. 20. They who love the Lord's feet are most fortunate. Alas, alas, they who attained the Lord's association and are now separated from him are most unhappy and unfortunate. They are like walking corpses. 21. Alas, what is the identity of they who, once smelling the sweet fragrance of the Lord's glorious lotus feet, do not at once renounce everything in this world? Are these persons all animals? Are they all trees and vines? Alas, alas, are they all unconscious stones? 22. They who find their happiness in drinking the nectar found at the Lord's lotus feet leave behind their homes, wealth, and relatives. They are the greatest of saints, saints who act like poor beggars, wandering in the forests and mountains. 23. Alas, 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 alas. Who? having once drunk with his eyes the nectar of his lotus feet, smelled the sweetness of his love, drunk from the ocean of his love, and tasted the sweetness of his words, can bear to be separated from Lord Chaitanya. 24. Intoxicated by the fragrance of his lotus feet, even today, Everyone has left behind all material bonds and become wrapped in singing the holy names and dancing. Who can tolerate the flames of separation from him? 25. Did someone see his sublimely merciful feet? Are the people hard like thunderbolts? Is love for him standing among us? 
Alas, alas, our fate is that we must suffer in separation from him. 26. I think the world has become a bottomless abyss where all the people have fallen into a great fire of sufferings and no one remains alive. Alas, alas, crooked fate is very strange. 27. By hearing only briefly of the Lord's dear virtues, how many people have become free, even now, from death? They who again and again gaze upon the Lord and hear about him experience happiness at every moment. Alas, alas, we live without seeing and hearing of him. How sinful we must be. 28. Filled with the nectar of the Lord's feet, with his holy name, with the great glory of his many virtues, the earth was once very fortunate. But now the same earth is burning in the fires of the Lord's separation. We will never be able to understand the cruel pastimes of fate. 29. Breathing long and hot sighs, loudly lamenting, their bodies emaciated and tears streaming from their eyes as they weep pitifully, the devotees faint again and again as they remember the virtues of their dear Lord. This is all very astonishing.